Hello, hello, and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Angel Bobs. So, for today's episode, I'm going to talk about a, a massive bit of news. I finally built my rocket silo. Yes, I've researched a rocket silo and I've managed to build one. And then I started to look into what you actually need um, to, in order to launch your rocket, and that gets a bit more um, a bit more complicated. So, in order to make a rocket. You need to have rocket engines, rocket fuel, rocket control units, low density structures and heat shield tiles. Now the low density structures I do already have, so that's one one thing. Um, I mean, they're being made here, how many have I got in this system? I've got I've got almost 10,000 here and that means the, and they're all full because low density structures are massive because they're low density I suppose. Um, I haven't actually looked at heat shield tiles or rocket control units yet because there's only so much stuff I can fit in my brain at once. But as you can see here, rocket engines, they're relatively straightforward except that they require tungsten. Now tungsten is not too bad, uh, you think, at first glance. So look at it and think, yeah, okay, so I need to have the, um, the purified versions of these three ores. So I've whacked in some purifiers over here next to my big metal bus. So they're, taking, they're all coming across here and then they're pulling in the the crystals and purifying them. That, that's that's okay. I was hoping not to have to do this, but it turns out you do need to for tungsten. So yeah, no big deal. <clears throat> then feed them into the sorters as normal with the um, with the catalyst. Easy, easy. <clears throat> but then it turns out the next couple of th these steps of processing, getting them up to um, pellets and processed in pellets is fine. But then we start to need things like ammonia and hydrogen fluoride, and that's where it gets a little bit more complicated. So ammonia isn't too bad. I've been making that over here for where is it? Somewhere around here. Here we go. This one. This this this, this structure here is making ammonia. Um, there, there, there we go. And in um, presumably reasonable quantities of it. Did I did I steal it from here? I can't remember. No, I um I went off and I built another ammonia plant up here. <clears throat> so this is quite straightforward. You just pull in iron ore, copper ore. And you need water as well that I've got coming in here from this from this lake. That's easy, and air that well comes out of the air, so that's easy. So this this isn't this wasn't too difficult. Uh, getting enough throughput to have to fill to fill place up reasonably quickly was uh, was um, a little bit more work, but but basically not too bad. And there's going to be a few places where I need ammonia, so I thought having a station that was producing lots and lots of it would be a good idea. And yeah, as you can see, these are both completely full, so that's obviously working well enough. Hydrogen fluoride, on the other hand, that was a little bit trickier. I'm doing that down here so as, uh, because the input for hydrogen fluoride is acid gas, and that comes from it's one of the byproducts from all of this, um, this gas cracking I'm doing here. So we turn, we separate the oil and gas into raw gas and condensates and sulfuric wastewater, apparently. Then the raw gas gets turned into acid gas and natural gas liquids. So this, this acid gas is something that had been just storing up in a small tank down here and then and then burning off because I didn't have any use for it. It turns out I do now have a use for it, so I'm piping it over here to where to this facility, which takes in which uses green catalysts. Now green catalysts are fairly complex. They take silver ore and um, aluminium ore, so I had to. Um, but both of those I was already building the um, or producing silver. Silver ore is down here in this big metal supply facility, and there's almost a hundred thousand of it, so that's going to be okay for a good while. Aluminium ore is being produced over here in the massive metal processor. Uh, one of these, yeah, so it's this one, aluminium ore, got loads, so we've got loads of that, that's certainly not a problem. But I did have to bring it in by train and build up at the extra couple of stations here to, to unload it. And this is a really, really dirty way of putting them together because they're all on the same line, but I'm kind of short on space down here, so I didn't really think I had room to put in one of the proper... Um, series of stations all sort of stacked together because if you look I've got one two three four five six I've got nine stations yeah nine stations here and whilst in hindsight they probably would all have fitted in in a nice column up here I started off with just the natural gas drop here and then and then the rubite pickup and then all the rest just sort of grew from there so it's a bit of an unplanned mess but but that's all fine the um this system is working the um the catalyst is being passed around, the machines are working, but we're basically out of acid gas, in fact we are out, we're essentially out of acid gas, With the rate we're producing the hydrogen fluoride at is, is absolutely pathetic, there's 26,000 in these. So I'm probably going to have to find another way of making acid gas, and unfortunately I can't find it in FNEI. Is it that one? Yes, that one. Most of the ways, so there is 
where is it? Somewhere in here there is a sensible normal way of making it. Here we go. This, this is what I'm doing at the moment. I'm taking in the raw gas and as you can see only only 20% of it comes out as acid gas which is why there's not a great deal of it. And I'm obviously not pumping it through fast enough because the plastic supply is not doing great either. But every single other method of getting them has something to do with gaseous puffers and that's something I've not looked into at all so that's going to be possibly a bit of an adventure should we say I, I, but I am going to need to look into this and try and work out what the best way of um, making which one of these produces the most acid gas it's probably a, this looks quite promising actually take four puffers nutrient pulp I'm gonna to have to work on as well I've got that a little bit of that but not a great deal um, and compressed air is easy 220 acid gas isn't too bad that's only 20, that's rubbish. 20. Yeah, so I'll I'll have to find a way of doing this, but that, that's going to be a, a job for, for the next episode. So, but it, as a sort of a proof of concept, it works. We are producing we are producing the the, 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 the hydrogen fluoride at a at a rate. The rate is an extremely slow rate, but it, nonetheless it is being produced. So that's a start. If I can if I can if I can start building the acid gas somewhere else, then that would be great. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll put it in somewhere near this because we've already got the nutrient pulp being produced here at a actually an excellent rate. This is um wow I've grown enough seeds and stuff up here now that uh, this appears to have completely backed up. That means I need to put more farms in. So um, these are, these have reproduced enough times I can put more farms in. That's absolutely excellent. I'll um in fact you know what let's just do that now because I'm thinking of it and we'll take out. Belt. Oh, I've got the <laughs> I've got the inserter and the belts. Uh, so we need an inserter. Well, let's put one there and there and there and a belt there. Um, and I was going to take out the belt there. And I need to power everything. Okay. That should, well, it won't quadruple it yet, but eventually, once all of this starts running properly, um, oh, I don't have any farms being made. Okay, I'll, I'll come back to that. I'm not going to do that on camera. Okay, so that's the, um, that's the tungsten uh, sorted out. That's, that's going, um, that's going reasonably well. That's so that, the, uh, the tungsten. I think has been the main, the main achievement recently. I've, um, it's because it's quite a complicated process, as you can see. It's, it's it, by the way, it sticks out further than the others. You can tell it's a more complicated system. Um, and it takes in this crushed metal as well. So I've got, I've got nickel and cobalt coming in down here, and this is quite nice because I was, I had far too much nickel before, um, over here in the, in this processing facility. It was backing everything up, and in fact, oh, what's that? That's zinc, I think, not nickel. Okay, there's still problems down here. I'm going to have to come along and hit this with a brick again. Um, Oh, the yeah, the the tin is yeah. Okay, so the solder production is going quite nicely, but it's all using the lead rather than the nickel. So I need to tweak that as well. I should probably be making a list of these things. But fortunately, I'm recording this, so I can come back and have a look at it in a later. <laughs> right. So the point was, I had lots of spare nickel down there that I didn't have anything to do with because I don't want nickel for anything. But it does get used here. So I think I'm going to come back up and reprioritize this a bit so that it uses so that the nickel gets pumped through. So the basically so these things you are more likely to use nickel than they are to use cobalt um, but while still having some that do use cobalt in case the nickel runs out because cobalt isn't going to run out because it's being made here in essentially infinite quantities right I think that's about it actually this is going to be quite a short episode because whilst I've what I have done has been quite time-consuming and quite a big job it's not actually um, produced an enormous number of extra products so I think I'm going, probably going to leave it there. I don't think there's much else I've been do doing. The uh, rocket silo down here, eventually, of course, we're going to have in some stations dropping off all the components and things. And I'm going to be building some of the stuff on site, like the, the rocket engines, because they only have about three different uh, components they need. I'm going to build those on site here. And I think the rocket fuel, let me just have a look at this diagram. Yeah, I mean, there's an enormous number of things that go into it. But I think... Most of that is probably stuff I can do on site because it's all just sort of monkeying around with solids. So yeah, there's a long chain of putting things together in order to get it, but I think it's probably going to be okay. 
I'll try and get that up and running for uh, for the next episode. That so there's that and the and the puffers are going to be my next uh, two priorities. Then I'll start looking at the rocket control units to find out how ridiculous they are to make and the heat shield tiles. I mean I feel they shouldn't be too bad, but you never know. They might be more complicated than I expect. And at that point I can start actually making rocket components in the in the old rocket silo here. Then I'll need to make a satellite, of course. Um, I haven't looked at the recipe. Let's have a look at the recipe for that, just because we enjoy the pain. Okay, that looks quite complicated. So there's a bit of overlap here with things that are required for the rocket, like the rocket control units, low density structure and rocket fuel. So that, that's fine because they'll already be here and be done. Silver zinc batteries sound like a challenge. Ooh, yes, that looks like a challenge. Radar 5, that's, just, that's probably going to be okay. That's just going to be building normal buildings. So I think I think that should be all right. I'm not too worried about that. So this, this is... Yeah, this is all some new and exciting stuff. So this is going to be difficult as well. And that can go in the next episode, I think. So, there we go. I've done tungsten. Um, although I'm short of acid gas. I've got some plans for making rocket fuel, which I shall go across in the next, go through in more detail next time. I hope you'll join me for that, and um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and I'll see you then.